I've cleaned and restored hundreds of Doc Martens, and in doing so, I've experienced the ins and outs to restore them. Today, I'm going to share some of my well-kept secrets with you as we restore these vintage 1460 Made in England smooth leather boots. Let's get to it. Hey guys, my name's Evan. My goal with every video is to share the skills and tools needed to love your leather. Like I said, I've cleaned hundreds of Doc Martens in the past and I would consider myself both a collector as well as a refurbisher. Whether you're cleaning up your own docks, putting them up for sale, or just watching for fun, I hope that this video shares invaluable content to you. I'm excited to transform these docks, so let's get to it. I think it's vitally important to know what you're dealing with in regard to the condition of your boots in order to identify how to treat it. As we look at these boots, we can obviously see that it has some dirt and debris, but we also note that the leather is a bit wrinkled, scuffed, and cracked. On top of that, it looks like there's some loose threads as well as some kind of caked on substance on the midsole. Additionally, there's areas of the leather where it has been scraped up, leaving a flap. I personally call them flappers. Lastly, the welt stitching on the midsole is where tons of dirt and debris accumulate on docks, so we'll be tackling that as well. Nonetheless, all of these things are treatable, and I'm going to show you how, so let's get to it. Our first step is to simply remove those laces in order to access the entirety of the shoe so that when we clean it, no dirt is left. And as you can see, these laces have seen better days. They're dirty, snagged, and twisted, so I may try to revive them, but we'll see. And if you take a look at the inner eyelets of the boot, you can see how old and worn this boot really is. The bluish green debris is called verdigris, as I've noted on other videos, and it's essentially when metal becomes oxidized. It's not actually harmful to the metal, but it's dirty and messy, so we're going to clean it off. And today we're going to be using my favorite cleaner from ShoeMGK because I found it to do an amazing job for all of my docks, no matter the material. But feel free to use whatever cleaner you're most comfortable with. Also, check out this video where I explain why I stopped using saddle soap. All I'm going to be using today is a gentle brush with a little bit of water, a few drops of concentrated cleaner, and begin scrubbing. It's vitally important not to use too much water or cleaner because we want to prevent the leather from getting too wet. A rookie mistake I often see is when people drench their leather with water and this can lead to damaging or shrinking your leather. You can always add more, so keep that in mind. You guys may have a different type of leather such as a patent leather or a suede leather, so go ahead and comment below if you'd like me to make a video for any of those as well. And of course, don't hesitate to ask any cleaning questions that I may have missed in this video. I enjoy answering them and it may help someone else in doing so. Don't be shy now. All right, so I wanted to touch on some reasons why many people prefer vintage Doc Martens to modern ones. Number one, higher quality leather. As they say, not all things are cut from the same cloth, in this case, the same cow. Well, what I'm trying to say is that not only is the leather cut from a different cow, but vintage docks used thicker and higher quality chosen hides. Number two, with that in mind, thicker hides mean more durability, which makes vintage docks more desirable and long lasting. Number three, the embossed side logo. Vintage docks have yet another display of their brand and differentiate older models from newer ones yet another way to show off the brand. Number four, brighter stitching around the welt. Vintage docks used a slightly different color thread when attaching the outsole to the upper. I'd say the yellow welt stitch is super iconic and differentiates it from every other brand out there. And lastly, darker soles. Whether due to age or materials used at the time, the vintage Doc Martens have less translucent outsoles. Though it's not a super significant difference, it is one that separates old from new. 
Do note that just because a Doc Martin is made in England doesn't mean that it's true vintage. Modern models are still recreated at their original Northamptonshire factory today, six decades later. So if you own a pair of Docs, are yours vintage or modern? Let me know down below. Okay, so I have absolutely no idea what this gray goop is on the side of this boot, but I do know that it does not easily want to come off. It's probably chewing gum with how stubborn it is, but no wonder they say not to eat that stuff. But the gum must come off. I have no doubt our cleaner can get it, it just may need a little bit more elbow grease. Because of these grooves on the midsole, I'm finding it pretty difficult to remove the gum, so I'm going to grab a paper clip and try to clean it within the grooves. Note to self, avoid gum at all costs. And any Doc Martin enthusiasts out there, comment below why you like vintage Docs better than modern ones. One of my favorite tools to restoring leather is Feebing's Leather Cement because it's formulated to bend and flex with leather. It's also water soluble so you don't have to be afraid of making mistakes. I'm just going to take a tiny glob and apply it directly underneath where the flap has been lifted so that I can seamlessly and permanently keep it down. After that, all you want to do is firmly push down on the flap in the opposite direction it was pushed up from in order to seal it down and simply remove any excess glue from there. Next, I'm going to show you my secret for removing frayed or loose threads, but before we do that, let's answer the question, can fire or heat ruin your leather? The answer, yes, it can if high temperatures are applied for an extended amount of time. However, like you see here, as I move my finger across the flame, I'm not burning myself whatsoever, only feeling the warmth of the flame. But if I did leave it there, I'd be ready for a third degree burn. And of course, that's exactly how people walk across burning coals without getting burned. In the same way, the small frayed threads burn quickly and easily by the flame, but the leather being supple and thick isn't affected within that short period of time. I hope that makes some sense. This next step is vital for the health and aesthetic of your leather. Prevent creasing and cracking simply by filling out your leather with each use. Shoe trees, paper, or even grocery bags can do a great job of keeping the form of your Doc Martens. If you don't keep your leather hydrated and fail to fill out the leather, you could end up with docks like these. And as you can see, there is some major creasing, cracking, and potential holes to be had. So if you learn one thing from this video, it's this. Leather, like our own skin, needs to be regularly hydrated even if your boots are sitting on the shelf. How often will be determined based upon your climate, season, frequency of use, and type of leather. But as an example, I personally wear my Doc Martens around 50 times a year and condition them at least quarterly in sunny California. I also clean them as soon as possible if they get really dirty because leaving dirt and debris can expedite the drying out of your leather. If you want to drop a comment below on when you should condition your docks, I'll do my best to offer a good suggestion and help you get your docks in a line. All right, that was a bad joke. But in all seriousness, if you guys want your docks to last, simple maintenance can make all the difference. And I do know that some of you guys out there love the worn and distressed styling, but just know that if you leave your docks uncleaned and unconditioned, it will make them wear out faster. So with that in mind, that's where one of my favorite products comes into play, the Shoe MGK Leather Cream. Now this is going to be identical to your Doc Martens Wonder Balsam, so if you already are familiar with that, great. This one's better in my opinion, and it's lasted me for more than 100 cleans, so definitely consider giving this one a try. So one of the reasons I love using this cream is because it's hyper versatile for boots, jackets, and even bags, but it is also insanely easy to use. Just simply grab an applicator sponge or cloth, 
a little bit of cream, you can never use too little, and simply apply it throughout the leather. Note that using too much can darken your leather if you have lighter colors. I use it for all of my Doc Martens, let alone all of the other leather shoes I own, unless they are a suede or a nubuck. Since suede and nubuck leathers are rough out materials, any waxes will ruin the textures. So in that case, you would use something like a mink oil spray. So just keep that in mind. Now we could leave these boots as is and they'd be perfect, but I just wanted to show how to both shine and fill in any scuffs and gouges by using shoe polish of which I have some hacks up my sleeve, so stay tuned. Note, if you wanna keep your leather looking in matte black, do not use shoe polish. Note also that shoe polish isn't very hydrating because it's mainly a wax barrier. It's like the difference between candle wax and skin moisturizer. Even though there's a barrier with the wax, what's underneath is still dry. So all you wanna do is grab yourself some shoe polish and a cotton cloth. Cutting up a t-shirt works fine as well. All you wanna do is insert two fingers into your cloth and twist the cloth until taut, grabbing the excess with your other fingers. Next, simply rub polish onto the cloth, making sure not to get too much at first. Again, if you need more, you can just add it later. Go ahead and gently rub in the polish thoroughly and evenly, and then comes our hack. Ice cubes? Well, yeah, so the logic behind using ice cubes is that it's cold. Polish is made up of waxes, and when we apply it, we want it to be warm, so we use friction to rub it on. However, when we want it to set onto the leather in order to fill out any scuffs, we need it to be cold so that it doesn't rub off. So we're going to pat the ice for a few seconds at a time, continually rubbing the wax. The water also prevents friction from building up, thus creating a shine that builds over time. Make sure that you don't get your cloth too wet because that will prevent you from creating a shine. Also, I'd love to hear how your docs came out, so don't forget to drop a comment below. Now, I didn't end up cleaning the laces for this video, but that doesn't mean you can't for yours. Simply grab your laces, agitate them with some water and cleaner, and once they rinse out clean, dry them, and they're ready to go. Next, if your laces are too far gone, you can easily pick some up at your convenience store. I got this pair for around two bucks. Doc Martens uses round laces, and it's because round laces are much more durable and can withstand much more pulling force like rope than flat laces can. I actually had some spare Doc Martens laces, so I'm actually going to be using those instead. One of our very last steps is dispersing the waxes and oils evenly throughout the leather, and we do that by using a horsehair brush. This brush is indispensable when cleaning and restoring leather, even if you're not trying to get a shine, because it is the most effective way to smooth out your leather. Another rookie mistake is pushing too hard when you're brushing your leather. You only need light pressure. However, you do need to vigorously brush back and forth in order to create friction that gently warms up the waxes and oils, creating a lustrous shine. Do your dog struggle with limp pool tab syndrome? We have a solution for you. Another exciting hack for your Doc Martens is very simply steaming or ironing your pool tab so that it easily goes back into place. Steam towards whatever direction you like. All right, guys, that is a wrap. I'm super pleased with how this vintage pair of Doc Martens cleaned up, and I hope that I was able to share some invaluable content with you. If so, please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. Also, share the video with your friends so they can learn a thing or two as well. Thanks again to our sponsor, ShoeMGK. Head over to their page to learn more about them, and don't forget to use my code EVAMIS at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. Thank you for entrusting me with your time and remember to love your leather.